Holy crap, could you imagine trying this? Like a vlogger? People are talking about using this for vlogging. Yeah. This is heavy. Nah, I wouldn't do that. F that. Welcome back to Behind a Short. I'm your host, Busty Malat, and today we're going to review the DJI Ronin S. Now, I really can't contain my excitement, so I'm just going to flat out say this at the beginning. I really, 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 really love this gimbal. I'm able to get a lot of really cool tracking shots that I previously wasn't able to do with just a shoulder rig. Throw in some cool push-ins, some pull-outs, some swooping revolving shots. You can even do some crane shots with it. Now I still need to practice a lot with this and get my technique down a little bit better. You can see a little bit of step in the footage, but I'm really impressed with the capabilities that this piece of gear enables for a low to no budget production. As for the gimbal itself, it has a really solid build quality and ergonomically feels right in your hands. I really like the inclusion of the stand that attaches or detaches to the bottom and can be used as an extension of the handle as well. In the past, I've had a lot of issues with app-based products, but so far so good with the Ronin S. The battery is actually built into the handle of the unit, which helps get rid of any extra external bulk. It takes about two and a half hours to charge the unit, and this gets you an impressive 12 hours of use. It's getting hot in here. Oh God, it's getting hot in here. Oh. Now, of course, this device does have some annoying cons, which I'm going to get into right after this break. First, as you saw in the open, this gimbal is very heavy. Whew. And it starts to feel very heavy very quickly, and if you're a weakling like me, you're going to feel pretty sore after a couple hours of operating this thing. I saw Casey Neistat talking about using the Ronin S for vlogging, which I just cannot see unless you have Popeye's forearms. Secondly, there is a remote focus wheel on the side of the gimbal that is just completely useless right now unless you own a Panasonic camera. DJI has stated that they will be releasing an update for the gimbal to be compatible with Canon and Sony cameras. So I'm hoping that that update comes soon because it's kind of annoying having that uh, focus wheel just kind of taunting you saying, oh, look at me, look at how cool I would be if I would just work, but I'm not working. The only way we were able to get focused tracking shots was because we were using the Canon 5D Mark IV with the dual pixel autofocus. Love it. Love it. Otherwise we would have had to stop up and have a very deep depth of field or we would have had to keep the same distance away from our subject. The joystick is a little finicky, but that could just come down to user error because I'm not very good at it yet. The biggest and most time consuming issue that I faced was with the balancing. And that's not because I've never balanced a gimbal before, I have. It was because pieces of the gear that were used to balance were just so tight they wouldn't want to move. And when I needed to move something just a smidge, I would have to put Put some force into it and then it would just shoot all the way to the other side losing balance completely very very annoying but those cons aside i really 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 do love this gimbal and i am really excited to keep practicing with it and eventually use it in an actual production that's gonna do it for this week's episode of behind a short if you enjoyed this video please like it share it subscribe to the channel drop a comment below and then tune in next week for more behind a short it's getting hot in here.